the next presenter is a AWS principal solution architect, O'Reilly author and a well-known international speaker. He will bring some of the light into uh, uh, into microfront ends, um, and he will be also uh, speaking um, about uh, anti-patterns in uh, microfront ends. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome and a big round of applause for Luca Mezzalira. Hi everyone, I hope that you are having a good day uh, and thanks a lot for having me. It's a pleasure being here today talking about, uh, in this case, anti-patterns. Uh, very often uh, we, uh, I spoke about the microphone tents very highly and I recognize that sometimes we need also to see the other face of the coin. Therefore, I put together these slides uh, where I share with you what I have experienced in the last seven years uh, building applications with microphone tents, not only for web, but also for low end devices like console, uh, smart TVs and so on, but also supporting customers all over the world, uh, introducing microphone tents in their, wor in their workloads. Uh, let's start with the, uh, with the sentence that uh, probably represent very well what I, I'm going to share today. Um, our CEO, Andy Jesse, um, is, coined this, uh, this sentence that's for me, this quote that for me is fantastic. There is no compression algorithm for experience. And I, I strongly believe on that because the reality uh, is when you start to, uh, let's say, uh, put your hands dirty in, in the code and work in the trenches, uh, you start to understand deeply a specific argument. And, and for me, uh, that was my experience with microphone tans. So I couldn't hold myself and I, I really uh, needed to start to share the experience because I felt back in the days in 2016 when I started uh, it was something that uh, could be important uh, for the for the front-end community and that's why I'm here today who am I my name is Luca Mezzalira I'm a principal solution architect in AWS I'm an international speaker and an O'Reilly author um, and let's start without any further ado. I would say that before we start uh, hammering uh, on, on a microphone dance, it would be great if we cover the benefits of microphone dance. So uh, in the last seven years, we, we learned a bunch of things about microphone dance. Uh, the first one is that, for instance, are great when you need incremental upgrades. So if before uh, with a single page application or a server side rendering one, uh, you tend to go and deploy the entire application, in this case, you can easily upgrade one part of the application and then uh, deploy that in production without potentially any coordination with other teams. And that is an absolute great feature because it allows you not only uh, when you have the entire architecture working with microphone tents to go faster and then every team can go there at its own piece. But moreover, it will allow you to migrate uh, your monolithic architecture slowly but steadily towards a microphone tents architecture and immediately see the value of what you're building in, in production because you can have the, the uh, monolithic architecture working alongside of the microphone tents one. The other thing that any distributed architecture brings on the table is the concept of decentralization. If before tech leaders were used to take the decision on uh, everything uh, from the um, design patterns, architecture, tools, and whatever, now we are slightly changing that, uh, that part. So the tech leaders now, they are playing a role of a platform team. Therefore, they are defining some core uh, concept, but the, the uh, end result will, will be made by the teams that will take the decisions, and therefore, developers start to have more skin in the game. That is uh, another great thing that obviously we need to take that carefully, uh, but at the same time, uh, it will allow to move faster. The whole point of uh, decentralizing and distributed uh, systems is trying to get the organization run faster and, uh, um, and potentially independently. Obviously, that doesn't mean you don't have to coordinate. You're going to create silos. That's not the, the end goal for, for microphone tents or microservices, but the whole overall uh, experience is trying to have uh, a smaller scope for every team and therefore moving faster. The other great thing of microphone tents is because, and every uh, distributed uh, architecture is that we reduce the, the, the team cognitive load. So uh, I don't know if it happened to you, but uh, back in the days when I was developing, um, 
it uh, let's say more than once i had to squeeze in my head this giant system and maybe we're five ten years old and everyone was working on that and they started to understand on, on something so you were extremely careful to change one line of code because you know that if it's broken um uh, then you need to fix it somehow and you don't understand the entire thing for the first few months with microphone tents because the the you reduce the, the team cognitive load as someone joined the company can immediately get uh, some create some value and they can contribute to, to the microphone tent and moreover uh, because there is team, uh, less cognitive load it's very uh, uh, it's less likely that you're going to introduce too many bugs because it's easier to reason uh, in, in a smaller context than the entire application how it works. And finally, uh, uh, the other cool thing uh, that architecture and organization structure are working hand in hand. And therefore, you cannot uh, think of designing architecture, even with microphone tents, and forget about the, the organization structure. Those has to be designed carefully together. And therefore, uh, if the organization structure uh, should help you to uh, enable the teams to work with distributed architecture, if it doesn't, you need to revise it. And Otherwise, you're going to, to fail miserably on uh, uh, because those two things has to be uh, careful thought. Otherwise, they are not going to work. So let's start with the anti-pattern. I collected a few of them just to give you a flavor of what I've seen, the most common ones, the one that I have experienced several times with customers around the world. So let's start with the first one that I call the ing and the yang. That basically is the distinction between microphone tents and components. So let's start with the component. How a component looks like. A component, let's take the, the most basic one, a button. How a button looks like. So the button usually works in that way. So you have a button and you want to insert a label and that is your component. Great. Then suddenly after a while, uh, the product team asks you uh, that this button, this button is used in, in a different portal uh, in a different way than a, a traditional one that you have just developed. So you need to add a new feature. So now you have an icon and the label. So now the button uh, allows you to, uh, let's say, pass the, the icon as a property uh, and, uh, and it's going to render it. Then suddenly a new requirement kicks in and you have to change the border color based on the portal that you are. And then you have a different rollover animation based on the portal that you are. And then you start to introduce localization and internal inter internationalizations. And therefore you, you are looking to auto size the dimension of your button because you need to fit uh, the label uh, that maybe in other languages compared to English is longer or, or smaller. And then finally, you start to uh, add a new functionality like disable uh, by default the button because in a specific uh, form, uh, you want to use this button with the icon uh, and, and suddenly you want to start uh, with the disable um, state till the user feel all the um, mandatory field. It's all great and you can, uh, and the component is designed in this way. However, there is one thing that we need to bear in mind when we are designing a component. All those features, despite are encapsulated inside uh, a, a component, are not driven by the component, are driven by the container of the component. That means the domain leaks inside uh, the container of, of the uh, component and not the component itself. And that is a great differentiator for microphone tents. Because in the definition of microphone tents, uh, you have usually, uh, I define microphone tents in this way, that are a technical representation of a business subdomain, the difference between front end, uh, sorry, microphone tents and components. Independent, uh, they are, uh, they allow independent implementation, therefore you can independently deploy them. They can be, be built with same or different technology. And then they minimize the code share, distributed architecture, you try to uh, reduce the external dependencies between teams. And finally, they're owned by a single team. But if we focus on the two key uh, things for defining a microphone tent compared to a component, we, we need to focus on the technical representation of business subdomain. And if you're familiar with domain-driven design, a business subdomain is a portion of uh, a domain, so a larger application. And in this case, a subdomain could be, I don't know, uh, user acquisition, or it could be more granular. It really depends how big is your organization. There isn't a, a, a rule of thumb to say, this is how you slice 
a microphone pen. This is how micro is micro. There isn't the rule of thumb. You need to, to understand your context, understand how the things are working, and then you are capable to uh, design properly your uh, microservices and microphone pens. So with that in mind, when we think about the microphone pen, what we want to have is first independency. So I want to deploy this microphone pen without any coordination. In the case of the button, if I change something, I need to coordinate with other teams. I need to make sure that it's working in the context, is implemented correctly, and so on and so forth. Instead, in this case, I want to deploy independently. I don't have to coordinate with anyone. I just want to deploy my uh, microphone pen without um, having uh, and notifying anyone. I want that is domain aware. The moment that is inside and deployed in the application and is inside the browser, has to know how to behave. It doesn't have to, uh, let's say, pass a gazillion of information like for the button. And, and that is key because that allows you to be independent in, in the um, microphone tent. It defines input and output because when you have multiple microphone tents in the same view, you need to communicate between each other. And therefore, you need to find a way for, for doing so. And finally, finally, it's not extensible like a microphone tent, uh, sorry, like a component. A microphone tent uh, is, tends to be more, if you want, um, uh, unique and, and uh, uh, it doesn't have to be composed with, with others. So your component can be, can be part like a button, can be part of a, a button bar or whatever it is. But in the case of microphone tent is the last artifact that you get and therefore you deploy that in, in production. So when you find yourself in a situation where you have too many microphone tents, or in this case, components, uh, probably you're dealing with components. You're not dealing with microphone tents. So bear in mind what you're trying to do because the design and the approach might be different. And therefore, you cannot complain that if it doesn't work working with uh, microphone tents. So first question that you need to uh, ask yourself in a situation like that, are we designing microphone tents or components? Because those has completely different way to handle them. The second anti-pattern is called the Hydra of Lerna, mythological, uh, mythological um, uh, creature. So uh, it's the multi-framework approach. Very often I heard microphone tents are meant for having multiple, um, um, let's say, frameworks uh, available. In reality, um, you can have this. You can have a microphone tent that is in React, another in Vue, another in Angular. My question for you today is this one. How many UI libraries or framework would you use in a single page application? And I hope the answer is not more than one because we know the performance matters. I don't get why it shouldn't matter for microphone tents. Despite you can do that, it doesn't mean you have to, that, to, to do that. That is fundamental. So there are certain situations where having a multi-framework approach makes sense for a certain period of time. Classic example, dealing with the legacy system. I'm migrating from my monolithic architecture and I want to move to microphone tents. Great. Should I go for 18 months development in stealth mode and then uh, suddenly uh, 18 months and one day I deploy uh, the entire system and boom, everything is broken? Probably not. We have a, a modular uh, and composable architecture. Let's, let's use it. So we build the microphone tent, we deploy it alongside the monolithic architecture, and we move on to the next one. We learn from, uh, from production what is going on, what is, what, is not, what is working, what is not. Also, when you are migrating to a new UI framework, for instance, if you're using Angular uh, 2 and you want, or Angular 1, and you want to migrate to uh, a newer version of Angular, you can do that iteratively. You can use these, these uh, things for a certain period of time. Migration, usually, they don't, uh, let's say, are, um, they, they don't stay long for forever. They will stay for a certain period of time. Therefore, think about that. And finally, another option that I have discovered uh, last year, when, meanwhile, meanwhile, I was uh, helping a few customers um, uh, introducing microphone tents is after uh, acquiring new companies. If you want to generate immediate value and you want to work with uh, uh, this, a system that you have no clue how it's built and they have different methodologies than yours, you can put it inside the same umbrella in a safe way using microphone tents. So use multi-framework approach when it's appropriate. Don't optimize for that. Don't start a project. I want every developer using any framework that they want because that is not the intent of using microphone tests. Next anti-pattern is the Swiss Army knife. Uh, I'm a, as you can see, I'm not the, the youngest person uh, in the world, not even the oldest one, but still I have uh, uh, experienced quite a few things. And one of that is Unix and their philosophy on creating programs that are doing one thing and one thing very well. 
And uh, imagine this scenario. So you have a Greenfield project, you decide to go with Microphone Dance. So you develop your Microphone Dance A, and uh, there is an application shell that is loading your, your Microphone Dance. Then you develop uh, another subdomain and it contains two Microphone Dance. So in this case, you have Microphone Dance B and C. You decide how those things has to communicate together. And then when you have done that, uh, you decide also how the different microphone tags are communicated together. So in, in the first case, you maybe use an event emitter. In the second case, you use a web storage. Uh, that's all great. But suddenly, you need to integrate the legacy editor. And the legacy editor, unfortunately, the team is not available because there is just one person that developed that legacy editor. All the others are gone. Uh, so you need to integrate the legacy editor in somehow. How would you do that? Um, there are, let's say, different options. You can integrate a legacy editor like here, and then in the application shell that contains the legacy editor, you start to sanitize the code for the communication. Instead of using event emitter, maybe uh, you wrap your legacy editor inside an iframe, and then you use post message in that case. Technically doable. There are better ways to do that. You can use what is called an anti-corruption layer. An anti-corruption layer is a wrapper that is dividing your internal ecosystem. So in this case, your microphone tense implementation with the external ones, so the legacy editor. And in this case, yes, you can keep it inside uh, the uh, iframe, but the communication is sanitized by the anti-corruption layer, so this container of the iframe. So in this case, the application shall remain um, normal, and it works exactly like everything is a microphone tent that you develop. And the beauty of that is that there is an architectural alignment. So you maintain the application shell that is probably the most fundamental thing that you have in the client side rendering implementation uh, uh, with the same API, and you don't have to deploy code that is ad hoc just for specific routes. Moreover, this is ready for the future. So if the legacy editor is not legacy anymore and you build your own editor, you want to integrate that, you just swap the microphone tents with a new one. As long as the, the API control remains the same, you are uh, good to go. You don't have to change anything else. You maintain the independence of the team. That is quite critical here. So try to spare the application shell code base because that is the thing that is very delicate and you need to be aware that if you introduce a bug, you might risk to compromise the entire application. Therefore, try to uh, come up with patterns that will help you uh, to, um, let's say, uh, minimize uh, the volatility of your code on, on that layer. The next uh, anti-pattern is the dependencies L, or do you really need that external dependency? Imagine this, this scenario. So. After a while, you decide that the building microphone that is great, but you want to share a bunch of core libraries, so common things that you want to, to handle. Everyone is, so you develop the core library, you have 1.1.0, you start to implement in your microphone tents. Great. So at the beginning, everyone has the, the, uh, the right uh, implementation. Suddenly, you go up with the, with the version, you de develop 1.2.0, and only microphone tent A the same day implemented the, the uh, new core library version. First question, question that you need to ask yourself is, can I live in a world where different microphone tents are handling a core library in different versions? It might be yes or it might be no, but in reality is a, a problem that a governance problem that you need to think about when you are dealing with microphone tents. Now we go with uh, uh, a more complex situation where you have a core library, but the team uh, responsible for microphone tent B is not happy with what they have seen on the core library. And the core library team is too busy to maintain what they have shipped. And it's not a priority adding new functionalities on the core library. Therefore, the microphone tent B team create the core library extended. So now you have 1.1.0 available in different parts. And suddenly, you uh, bump up. Uh, and obviously, also the core library extended is uh, extending uh, the, the core library. Suddenly, though, there is a new upgrade. And then you have a breaking change because you bump up the major version of your core library, 2.1.0. Then all the other microphone tents implement that as it is without any problem. What happens to, to the core library extended that was relying on the previous contract? There is more work to do. And uh, um, it might be a, a challenge, because especially if they change the behaviors of those uh, APIs and those uh, functionalities of the core library. The problem, unfortunately, scales with the amount of shared elements that you have in microphone tents. Distributed systems are great. When you share too much, probably you need to ask yourself, do you really need to do so? 
Therefore, if you want to really handle uh, and go ahead in a situation like that, try to work uh, uh, with uh, extensibility in mind and trying to work with uh, composition over inheritance uh, when you are designing uh, the extended core libraries or similar. So in this case, my suggestion is always choose composition or inheritance, but ask yourself, do you really need to share that bunch of logic? Because often the answer is no, unless there are compelling reasons for, for doing so. The next anti-pattern is called a return ticket, please. And uh, uh, basically what we have learned with unidirectional data flow. So there are situations with microphone tents where sometimes you can have a container uh, that is loading a, a microphone tent. In this case, let's call host and remote. If you're familiar with the Web, Webpack module federation, probably you know what I'm talking about. But you can also do the other way around. So a host can expose certain parts uh, and is bidirectional. And recently there was also an implementation of omnidirectional sharing in, in uh, uh, module federation. But in general, those are the things that you uh, you are you can do. The problem of bidirectional sharing is um, very well known, and unfortunately, we forgot uh, for for a while, especially if you are coming uh, into the, this industry after the the um, creation of Flux. Flux was a, a um, state management created by Facebook that implemented for the first time in a clear and nice way unidirectional data flow. So there were four elements, action, dispatcher, store, and view, and those were, uh, let's say, unidirectional. So if you want to make a change, you dispatch, an, you have an action, then you update the store, and then you update the view. That was the way. And that became extremely easy to reason about because every single element has its own way to do things and is easy to debug, easy to, to deploy. The same thing was implemented uh, more recently with model view intent. It's another type of architecture that if you're familiar with CycleJS, uh, probably you don't know already, but if you, uh, if you are an Android developer working with Kotlin, uh, is another way that uh, you can build. And once again, we are leveraging unidirectional data flow. So the, the direction of the data and the information are going in one direction only. There is no bidirectional that create confusion and make uh, your life uh, sometimes miserable. Therefore, with unidirectional data flow, you need to bear in mind that we learn that there are, it's great because it's easy to, easy to debug, because I know exactly with single uh, responsibility concept and uh, announced also with the fact that it's unidirectional, so easy. And also it's less prone to error, it's, it's easier for a developer to reason about that. Therefore, my suggestion is, despite you have the, the capability try to avoid bidirectional sharing because at some point when you have many of that understanding how the system works could lead to coupling between teams and coupling between microphone tens and that is the situation where you don't want to be the next one is called the relaxed is just code and that's um something that i heard probably too many times in my career or avoid organizational coupling so one of the uh, things that uh, you, you will find yourself when you're dealing with microphone tents uh, is, uh, is this one. So you have multiple microphone tents in the same view. You need to find a way to communicate together. And many people are saying, oh, you can use a global state. Perfect. I pick Redux. I put it across all the microphone tents. But unfortunately, what you are creating is something like that is design time coupling. Design time coupling is a well-known um, situation for microservices, less known in the front-end world. But basically, it means that every time that I make a change, I need to coordinate with other teams in order to deploy that, to make sure that it's working. And that is exactly what you don't want to be in, in, in a situation like that. You need to be loosely coupled and highly aligned. And that's where you want to be in reality. So for avoiding that, Instead of having a global state, you can have an event emitter. Event emitter is leveraging the pub sub pattern, publish subscribe. It's designed for solving the problem that you want the producer uh, emitting an event, and someone, some consumers will will listen to it. Then, is listening or not is not a problem of the producer, but I can work independently. I can evolve the things independently. And tomorrow, if I want to add another microphone then in this view, I just need to know the list of events are bubbled and when, and then I will plug my new microphone then without bothering all the other things. That is what you in reality would like to have. So embrace loosely coupled, coupled but high-line microphone tents, highly aligned microphone tents. 
The last one is, is called left armored API. And that is when you have multiple microphone dance calling the same endpoint. So imagine a situation like that where you have multiple microphone dance. And at some point, the two microphone dance at the bottom are calling exactly the same API. OK, you are in a situation like that. Probably if you're using microphone dance, not necessarily, but there is a high chance, in my experience, that you might have a microservices or a distributed system in the backend. Great. So you have now two microphone dance calling the same API. What does it mean? OK, so usually for exposing some microservices, you have an API gateway. It could be a pattern. It could be the, the name of, of a project. It doesn't matter. But you usually have, an, a, a, let's say, a layer that expose, is exposing your APIs. These APIs, although, are uh, behind authentication. Therefore, those two uh, microphone dance are sending uh, as a header the bearer token that is needed for validating the user is entitled to, to uh, consume an API. Great. So in this case, that you need to call the authorization service twice. Perfect. Authorization service confirm your, uh, uh, your uh, authorization, and it moves on. And finally, you arrive to API 1. Unfortunately, it's not that easy because you are in a distributed system. And distributed system works that sometimes you need to call other APIs for having the final response. Therefore, as you can see, now we don't call any, uh, any, uh, any more one API at a time. And you call twice, so you have you double the traffic. Now, with, no, with numbers that are under, uh, under hundreds, great, hundreds per second, great. The problem is when you have uh, those numbers that are way bigger. So move, having a throughput of uh, half a million or a million of requests per second change drastically the way how you design your architecture on the back end. Therefore, you need to be aware of the cascade effect that you have on your uh, design decision. So possible solution. First thing that I would do is going back to the whiteboard and understand if in reality those two microphone tents are just one microphone tent and can be owned by a single team. If really you identify that there are two different microphone tents, in reality, what you could do is having one microphone tent and have multiple components. We have seen before the components allow you to leak the, the domain outside from the container. And therefore, is exactly the case that we want. So the microphone tent is performing the call and injecting to the component A and B the uh, result. So when you take a decision, despite it seem minimal, Try to understand in reality how the whole system works. Because if you live inside your uh, team only, uh, you might risk that other teams could be affected by your decision. Remember that everything that I showed you uh, is uh, architectural decisions that has to take into consideration uh, the trade-off based on the context and uh, what you're trying to achieve as a business requirement. Therefore, there isn't right or wrong in modern architecture. There is only the right or decision for your context. So if you are borrowing an implementation from, from another uh, company, try to make sure that you're trying to optimize for the same architectural characteristics uh, that your, that company was, uh, was implementing. Otherwise, you might find you're in trouble. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed the talk. Uh, we will have later on uh, another uh, Q&A session. So um, if, I'm, if I will be able to answer all your questions during that session, great. Otherwise, you have my email here. Feel free to reach me out anytime or on social. Uh, and thank you again uh, for having me.